My cat Blossom and I were just talking about the difference between virtual reality that you would wear a virtual reality headset to experience and extended reality that we use a pair of XR glasses to experience. And she was asking, what's the difference between the two? Which one do I think is better for education? And how would I use them in education and learning? So I said, you know what, Blossom? Why don't we just make a video and we'll share that information with everyone. Hey everyone, I'm Frank and this is my little black cat, Blossom. And in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between virtual reality, how we use it and why it's good for education and XR or extended reality and why it's also good for education. Here on this YouTube channel, Learning and Technology with Frank, we look at how we can use technology to teach and learn and be more productive. If that sounds interesting to you, check out some videos on the channel and like and subscribe to the ones that you like and subscribe if you want more. So let's talk a little bit about virtual reality first. Now this is a MetaQuest 3 VR headset and the VR headsets have evolved quite a bit in the past few years. The earlier ones, believe it or not, were bulkier than this one. They required a tethered cord to a computer because computation took place on a computer and they were just visual devices. Well, with the MetaQuest 3 and some other devices that are out on the market as well, the computation is built into the device itself. That means this is not just a visual tool, uh, uh, the glasses and the lenses and such. This here is the computer itself making it a standalone device. Additionally, you're in a fully immersive environment and that environment is fully interactive. You can interact with your hands, it'll actually sense your hands, or you can use a controller in order to move around the environment. And those environments are many varied. You can go to the space station, you can travel back in time, you can visit distant parts of the, the world. There's all sorts of things you can do in that immersive environment which can really help you when it comes to explaining and understanding concepts in education. Now, of course, they're also great for gaming, but being an educational channel, we'll focus on the educational uses here. So these are standalone devices, completely immersive. The negative or the downside is that they are a little bit heavier, so some people do find them hard to wear for long periods of time. The other thing is that they, um, they, some people get a little bit nauseous or queasy when they're wearing them, so <clears throat> not everybody's going to be able to wear them. And then you can do a lot of the activities with these in a seated position, but some of those activities do require you to have a space to move around. And then we have the XR glasses. Before we look at the unique features that XR glasses give us, let's look at how a headset and XR glasses are the same. And that is they both give me a private environment that only I can see. Much like the sponsor of this video, Venice AI, which is an uncensored private encrypted AI solution that allows me to work with both text and images. So I can do a more complex model, a quick model, a model well suited for coding. There's different models that I can select from in Venice AI, including different image models for ones that are artistic, ones that are more accurate, ones that have higher quality. I can even do anime. And when I go in and put a prompt in, I can configure exactly how that behaves. I can configure the system prompt. I can configure how Venice Voice works if I want it to read out the responses to me. I can set the language and such. I can even set the way that the system prompts behave in terms of a temperature and the top P. What it means is that with temperature, whether the input or the output is more random and in terms of a higher value for the p value is whether there is repetitive or less repetitive outputs i can really dial it in let's run an anime for example of a professor a magical professor who reminded me a little bit of phoenix right let's look at running some code i'm going to run some python code in here have it create a DD game for me a text-based adventure game and you can see and i've sped up the video a little bit with the output that Venice AI is able to generate this code, generate these images for me, and everything is encrypted, everything is private. When you execute a prompt against the Venice AI, it's sent to Venice encrypted, it is then anonymized and sent to the model, the model returns the result to Venice, who returns it to you. 
This allows you to have private and uncensored AI so that you can ask any questions without receiving bias or being tracked for purposes of marketing or identifying who you are. These are the Vitruluma Pro glasses. I do have a number of videos here on the channel about these glasses. Once again, I'll link those down below. But you can see that they look just like a pair of regular sunglasses. They're lightweight, I could wear them all day. Now what they have in them are a couple of OLED screens that then project and allow me to see in front of me a 152 inch screen if I wanted to do something like watch a documentary or if I wanted to play video games I can do that as well. I can connect these to a computer and have multiple displays and that is something that I do have to do with these glasses. There is no computational power in terms of driving the process on these glasses so what I need to do is I need to tether them into a computer an iPad or an iPhone and then that device will handle the computation and these will handle the display. They really are like taking a high quality display and putting that right in front of you. So that's the value that they have. They don't give me the immersive experience of VR. They don't necessarily have the computation self-contained. You do need the other device, but they're super lightweight. They're easy to wear all day long and they're really good for productivity. These ones are a little bit special too because they're part of an ecosystem so you can actually get what's called a neckband pro and this here is a computer. So just like with the VR headset the computer was built into the frame, here I can have a computer that I wear around my neck. I still tether those to the glasses for the display. I now have the computer on my neck and I have the glasses as a display. That can overcome some of the limitations. Now a VR environment will have you know, different types of experiences that are interactive. The experiences here with the Luma Pros are a bit more of a consuming type of experience. Really good for watching documentaries. If I want to use them for productivity, I can tether a Bluetooth keyboard to them and I can work with web apps. I can work with applications if I have them installed on the neckband or on my computer. So think of these more as a high quality display that interacts with computational services you already have. And then my VR headset, think of this as a special purpose computer for 360 immersive environments. The question now is, of these devices, which one is better for education and which one might you want to get? Now for a lot of people comparing the two devices, they're going to talk about gaming. There are a lot of really interesting 360 games out there that you can experience with VR. They're amazing. But the XR glasses by Luma, you can hook these into a Switch 2 and you can hook them into a Steam Desk Deck and other gaming devices. So when it comes to gaming, it depends on the type of games you're playing, but we're talking education. So when it comes to education, I do tend to use the XR glasses for an hour to three hours a day. Why? Because what I can do is by wearing the neckband and putting on the glasses, I can have a completely private workspace. I have a foldable keyboard that I take out and now I can simply go in and work on things like office documents, PowerPoints, Excel spreadsheets, Google Docs and such and I can have that private experience without having to worry about disturbing people around me and without having to worry about other people looking at grades that I might be input putting for students and such. So it gives me those additional screens and it gives me that privacy. I really like that. Plus it's lightweight enough that I can wear it throughout the day and it is something that really I believe enhances my productivity and also allows me to take advantage of a lot of good high quality screens. It's a great add-on to my existing productivity. But then when it comes to things like immersive experiences, the VR wins because this allows me to have immersive and interactive experiences that I would not normally be able to have. Things like visiting the space station or going back in time or visiting a different part of the planet. I can do all of that using VR. Right now we're doing some work with students where we have them doing practice job interviews. There's a great piece of software called Ovation. I have videos here on the channel on that as well, 
where you can go in and practice your presentation and communication skills and get feedback as you do that in a fully immersive environment. That wouldn't be possible with the XR glasses, but it is possible with VR. So XR becomes my day-to-day, -day, use it a lot type of immersive environment, and my VR becomes my fully immersive environment, but I travel use to this device, or I use this device as a specific experiential thing that I want to do. I want to go in to use this for a specific purpose, whereas I'm using this for multiple purposes throughout the day. So they're both great for education in different ways, whether you're looking for a device that provides a private study room, I have a video coming up on how we can use these as a private study room, or whether you want to go in and have a fully immersive experience. I have videos on using VR in education, as well as one coming up on that communication software, the latest version. Either way, you can't go very far wrong. Now, people always ask me about price, so I'll kind of end with that. When it comes to pricing, the VR headset has computation built into it, so this will be a little bit more pricey than XR glasses. With the XR ecosystem, it really is nice with the, head, with the neckband. So the neckband pro and the glasses are about equivalent to buying a VR headset. So there's not really one that has a clear price comparison where one is specific, you know, drastically less or more expensive. From the standpoint of education, maybe these would be more of something an individual would get. They could carry it around with them. They could use it as, as an augmentation to their computer, their phone, their iPad, their Android device. And these would be something that if the individual didn't have, a classroom could buy these. These would be good to have a classroom set of these or a set of these in the school that could be used for those experiences for specific lessons and such. There's lots of ways that we can get creative on how to use both. I'm very interested in your comments actually. Comment down below and let me know what you think about either of these devices in education, maybe some ways that you've used either of the devices. One of the things we definitely know is that the cost is coming down and the technology is improving, so it's only going to be more and more of these available to us, and that's fantastic because it's a technology that really does enable and help learning, so I think it's very good. You can see a lot of videos here on the channel where I talk about both of these devices and all sorts of learning and technology subjects. So thank you so much for watching. We now have channel memberships. If you want to get a little badge when you comment, you can do that as well. And uh, if you have any comments, put them down below. Do the like thing if you want to like this video. Subscribe if you like videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.